Welcome to YQ Academy Java Fundamentals Interview Questions and Answers 1. What are variables and data types in Java? In Java, variables are used to store data or values that can be manipulated and accessed within a program. They act as containers for storing different types of information, such as numbers, text, or objects. Before using a variable, you need to declare it with a specific data type. Data types in Java specify the kind of data that can be stored in a variable. Java has two categories of data types, primitive and non-primitive, also known as reference types. 2. What are the differences between primitive and non-primitive data types? A definition, primitive data types are the basic building blocks of data in Java. They are predefined by the language and represent fundamental types of data, such as numbers, characters, and Boolean values. Examples include int, double, char, Boolean, etc. Non-primitive data types are derived from primitive types, but they are not built into the language. They are created using predefined classes or custom-defined classes. Examples include string, arrays, classes, interface, etc. B. Memory allocation. Primitive data types are stored directly in memory and typically occupy a fixed amount of space. The actual value of a primitive variable is stored directly in memory. Non-primitive data types are references to objects. The variable itself stores a memory address pointing to where the object is stored. The actual object is stored in the heap memory. C. Behavior. Primitive data types are immutable, meaning their values cannot be changed once assigned. If you assign a new value to a primitive variable, it creates a new memory location. Non-primitive data types are mutable, meaning you can modify the contents of an object. Multiple variables can reference the same object, and changes made through one variable will be reflected in all references. D. Methods and functionality. Primitive data types have no methods or built-in functionality. They are simple values with no associated methods. Non-primitive data types have methods and functionality associated with them. These methods can be used to manipulate and perform operations on the objects. A nullability. Primitive data types cannot be set to null, as they represent actual values and not references to objects. Non-primitive data types can be assigned a null value, indicating that they do not reference any object in memory. 3. What is typecasting in Java? Typecasting in Java refers to the process of converting a value of one data type into another data type. It allows you to treat a variable as if it belongs to a different data type temporarily. Java provides two types of casting, implicit casting widening and explicit casting narrowing. Implicit casting occurs when you assign a value of a smaller data type to a variable of a larger data type. Java automatically performs this type of casting as it is considered safe and doesn't result in any loss of information. Explicit casting is necessary when you assign a value of a larger data type to a variable of a smaller data type. It involves a manual conversion and may result in a loss of information or precision. To perform explicit casting, you specify the desired data type in parentheses before the variable you want to cast. For example, for how does the concept of variable scope work in Java? Describe the differences between local variables, instance variables, and class variables, including their visibility and lifetime. In Java, variable scope refers to the portion of the program where a variable is accessible and can be referenced. 
the scope of a variable is determined by where it is declared and it affects its visibility and lifetime. Local variables are declared within methods or blocks, have a narrow scope, and are accessible only within the block where they are declared. Instance variables are associated with instances objects of a class, have a wider scope, and are accessible throughout the class. Class variables static variables are associated with the class itself, have the widest scope, and are accessible to all instances objects of the class. 5. Explain the concept of autoboxing and unboxing in Java. Provide examples to demonstrate how these operations work with primitive types and their corresponding wrapper classes. Autoboxing and unboxing are automatic conversions between primitive types and their corresponding wrapper classes. Autoboxing allows you to convert a primitive type to its corresponding wrapper class, while unboxing converts a wrapper class object back to its primitive value. These conversions are done automatically by the Java compiler, making the code more concise and readable. Autoboxing and unboxing simplify the process of working with primitive types and their wrapper classes, allowing you to seamlessly convert between them without explicit conversions. In the first example, the int argument primitive is autoboxed to an integer object when passed to the printinteger method. In the second example, the int value 5 is autoboxed to an integer object when added to the array list and later unboxed to an int when retrieved from the collection.